Have you ever wondered how Envisioner frames walls, how it knows to use a double top plate and place studs 16 inches on center? You probably have if you wanted to change how it frames. For this lesson, we'll look at just that. I want to note that the ability to customize framing is only available in our Building Essentials and Construction Suite versions. Infill refers to the material that fills the volume of the wall. An infill configuration determines what types of members are used for the studs, top plate, bottom plate, and very top plate, the spacing between the studs, and the way in which members are aligned and rotated. By default, walls are framed using the infill configuration defined under Settings, Building Locations. Each location will have framing options for that location. Select the button in the Location row that you want to view the framing options. The Location Framing Options dialog box appears. The selection in this dialog determines how walls on each location will be framed. In this lesson, we will double-click the Infill Configuration entry to focus on it. By double-clicking, the Wall Infill Library dialog has opened. The Wall Infill Library contains several wall infill configurations in both wood and steel. Infill refers to the material that fills the volume of the framed wall. An infill configuration determines what type of member is used for the infill and the position and alignment of each component. Different infill configurations will display different results when framing is displayed and may also have an effect on the members reported in your project estimate. Select one of the configurations and then right click on that option. You can add, edit, and delete infill configurations in the wall infill library. Select Add Infill Configuration for this lesson. The Infill Configuration dialog box appears. An infill configuration determines what type of member is used for the infill and the position and alignment of each component. At the top of the dialog, give the new infill a name that reflects what is in the infill. The dialog box is broken into three sections. Members lists each member in the infill configuration. As you select a member, its corresponding parameters will appear in the middle and a preview of the framing infill highlighting that member will appear on the right. The very first entry under Members is Infill Properties, not a member, but general rules on how to lay out the members, such as Stud Spacing, the distance from the center of one stud to the center of the next. Interference, what happens when one wall intersects the wall right where a stud would go. Selecting Nearest shifts the stud to one side of the interfering wall intersection. Selecting Remove prevents a stud from being inserted where there is an interference. Cut opening bottom plate. In door openings, this removes the bottom plate at the bottom of the opening. If you cut the bottom plates after framing the opening, uncheck this option. Then there's projection into plates. Top extension, the distance the studs projects into the top plate. This is particularly useful for incorporating framing channels in steel framed walls. Base extension, the distance the stud projects into the bottom plate or even past the bottom plate when creating an infill or a pole barn as an example. Generate end studs. Start end stud. If unchecked, the start of the stud will be removed. End stud. If unchecked, the stud at the end of the wall is removed. This is predominantly unchecked in cases like a pole barn or post and beam configuration to avoid two posts at a corner. Let's look at the bottom plate as a horizontal framing example. Select the member and the parameters will appear in the middle and the bottom plate is highlighted to the right. The new copy and delete buttons become active. If you want a double bottom plate, you can copy what is already there or if you need it to be different, you can select new. If you don't need a bottom plate, you can select delete. In the middle parameters, first it gives the name. The name can be changed so it needs to be grade board, then you can type that in. Next is use member from. You have two options. When you draw a wall, there's a member associated to the wall. For example, when you select the 2x4 interior wall, it is a 2x4 in its properties, whereas a 2x6 interior wall will have a 2x6 associated to it. To use the framing member assigned to the wall in its properties, select Wall Properties. This allows each wall, even though they are framed differently, to use members appropriate for that wall. To use a specific member for all bottom plates on that location from the member library, select Member Library. The Catalog Access dialog box appears to make a selection for the plate. Click OK once you've selected. By selecting the Member Library option, it overrides the Framing Member selection in the Walls property. Member. 
If wall properties is selected in the use member from field, the member field displays a generic description, wall frame member, indicating that the member to be used is the one selected in the wall's properties. If a member library is selected, use the use from field, the member field displays the member type to be used as selected from the member library. To select a different member, click in this field and then click the button to display the catalog access dialog. Next, there's rotation. The rotation of the member about its center line. Usage. When the member will be used for, usages are used as sort keys in estimates and reports. To select a usage, click in the field and then click the button to display the usages library. Phase. The building stage or process in which the member will be used. Phases are used as sort keys in estimates and quantity reports. To select a phase, click in the field and then click the button to display the phases library. Let's look at studs as an example of laying out vertical members. Select the studs group in the left pane. By default, there's one stud item listed. This will result in a standard frame wall with a single stud at every spacing interval. If you want multiple studs in the configuration, example double studs, you can add new or copy studs in the studs group. Looking at the parameters for the stud versus the name, the name of the stud item as it appears in the studs group in the left pane. The first five parameters are the same for each member. The next parameters are different for a vertical member. It needs to know how to place the member in relation to the top and bottom plates. First, we'll look at position along the wall, anchor two. The item of the stud is relative to in defining its position along the length of the wall frame. If there's only one stud in the configuration, the only available option is stud reference line, which is like an imaginary chalk line that marks your stud spacing. If there's more than one stud in the configuration, you can anchor the stud to another stud in the list, meaning its position is relative to the stud in which it's anchored. Next is alignment, the position of the stud relative to the stud reference line. For example, a left to right alignment would mean that the left side of the anchor stud is anchored to the right side of the anchor stud. To change the alignment, click in the alignment field, then click the button to display the member alignment dialog. Use the slider controls to shift the anchor position. Next is offset. The distance the stud is shifted from its anchor position. A positive value shifts the members to the right, while a negative value shifts the stud to the left. We then have position front to back, and then there's an anchor too. The item that the stud is relative to in defining its position within the width of the wall, from the front of the wall to the back. If there's only one stud item in the configuration, the studs will be anchored to the bottom plate. If there's more than one stud in the configuration, you can anchor the stud to the other stud in this configuration. Alignment. The position of the stud relative to the anchor item. A mid to mid alignment means that the middle of the stud line lines up with the middle of the anchor stud. A mid to front alignment would mean that the middle of the stud line lines up with the front of the anchor stud when looking at the wall frame face on. To change the alignment, click in the alignment field, then click the button to display the member alignment dialog. Use the slider to adjust the position of the stud to achieve the alignment that you want between the front and the back of the wall frame. Lastly, there's offset. The distance the stud is shifted toward the front or the back of the wall from its anchor position. A positive value shifts the stud towards the back, while a negative value shifts it towards the front. Another member we will review is blocking, also referred to nogging in different regions of the world. To edit blocking member properties, select the blocking item in the blocking group in the left pane. If there isn't a blocking member in the configuration, you can add more blocking members to the blocking group by clicking New. The parameters in the middle start again with name, the name of the blocking item as it appears in the blocking group in the left pane. The next parameters are the same as the other members reviewed until we get to behavior along the wall. First is break at stud. If you select yes, the blocking will be broken at each stud, resulting in separate members between each set of studs. If you select no, one solid member will run across the wall. Next is position bottom to top. First here, there's placement. Select the component from which you want to offset the blocking a specific distance, from bottom plate or from the top plate. And then there's initial offset, the distance the blocking is offset from the top or bottom plate, whichever you selected in the placement drop box. Then there's spacing, 
Specifying a value here creates copies of the blocking member vertically within the wall from the initial offset point. The spacing value represents the spacing between blocking members. Think of ladder framing. Then there's stagger. If you've set your blocking member to break its studs, select yes here and the stagger the blocking members across the wall. If you select no, the members will be even with each other. The stagger distance is the thickness of the member. Now adjust the position front to back. Here's alignment, the front to back position of the blocking member relative to the stud. A mid to mid alignment means the middle of the blocking member lines up with the middle of the stud. A back to front alignment would mean that the back of the blocking member is aligned to the front of the studs. Offset, the distance the blocking member is shifted toward the front or the back of the wall frame from its anchor point. A positive value shifts the member toward the back while a negative value shifts it towards the front. If you want the blocking sitting outside the studs, up against them, offset is what you would use. For every different way you frame a wall, you can create an infill. Pole barns, steel framing, ladder framed walls, no blocking, each one is there and ready to use to frame your walls. I hope that makes your envisioneer work easier.